Today's video is about the number one thing I get asked about by far, teaching a kid to read. I've got a lot to say about it, and I think it's gonna make your life a lot easier. Hey guys, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Today we're talking about teaching kids to read. Oh stresses everybody out. You know, teaching kids to read is kind of like potty training. You're so stressed out about potty training around two years old, but you never see six-year-olds running off on the soccer field wearing a diaper still, right? You also never see homeschooled kids that are 10 years old or 15 years old who can't read. They learn to read eventually. I promise. I think my point in saying that is we can either force it to happen super early and just struggle, 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 or we can wait until they're actually ready and it's like, bam, done, easy. I'm not quite sure why we feel like we have to put ourselves through so much trouble with all of these milestones with our kids, but if a child is not ready for something yet, it's like a nightmare trying to force it to happen. And then when they are ready, it just happens so effortlessly. That's just the way that God designed it. I am a huge supporter of the normalization of late reading. If you take some time to read some books, listen to some podcasts, look at some studies done by neurologists, done by other scientists about learning to read, you will find that most of the time at the age of five, especially in boys, there are other building blocks happening in the forming of their brain. And whenever we force them to start learning something that's really still very abstract to them, such as letters, it interrupts another process that's trying to take place. And I am just completely convinced of the science behind it. And I also see it with my children and every child I know that usually kids are not ready quite at five years old. And every kid is different. We really need to pay attention to the individual child and see, are they understanding this or does this just seem so foreign to them right now? Do they get these concepts? Is this a drudgery for them right now? Pay attention to the child's response in a reading lesson. I started researching this a lot when my oldest was about four or five years old. And I said, you know what? I'm convinced. So he wasn't really showing the signs of being ready and I just put a pause on things. I waited six months, tried again, still wasn't ready. Waited six months, tried again, this continued. You guys, he was seven and a half years old and he still wasn't learning to read. And I was like sticking to my guns. I was like, you know what? The science is out there. I am gonna wait until he's ready. I don't wanna kill his love for learning. It's so much more important to me than him reading earlier. The, you know, the love of reading and continuing to be a lifelong voracious reader is my goal. So I am waiting. But guys, it was so hard. I felt so much judgment from so many people who did not understand why my seven-year-old couldn't read yet. It was hard. The only reason I can talk about this now is because I've done it and I am on the other side of it. If you are in the middle of this, let me tell you it's worth it. What you are sacrificing to force your child to read early is not worth it. Whenever Benjamin started reading at seven and a half to eight years old, he learned so fast. He surpassed his peers like within six months he was several levels above where he was supposed to be because all of a sudden he was really interested in it and he picked it up and it was like brilliant. It was very hard for me to step out in faith with that first kid and to wait until he was actually ready. But when I saw the success of it afterwards and how he excelled so quickly, I was like, yep, doing that with all my kids. And I have, and I have watched many, many other homeschool families do the same thing. So if you are a homeschooler, congratulations. You have the freedom to tailor their education to each child. Okay, so here are my top tips about teaching your kid to read. I'm gonna go fast, so hold on tight. Number one, do not force your kid to read before they are ready. What you are sacrificing is not worth it. Being force fed is what causes kids to absolutely hate school. Just some food for thought. Number two, cultivate a love for books in your home. Let your kid catch you curled up with a good book reading, just unable to put it down. You really want them to see how delicious reading can be. Number three, do read aloud to your kids no matter what grade they're in. 
what you're reading aloud to them should be well above their own reading level and just a little bit above their comprehension level. What this is gonna accomplish for you is like magic. You don't even really need vocabulary as a separate separate sub you don't really even need vocabulary as a separate subject in school at that point because reading aloud accomplishes all of that for you. Family read aloud time is my favorite time of day. A few ways to make this fun and get your kids interested is pair it with special snacks, pair it with tea time, or do it right before bed, which means in their eyes, they're getting to stay up a little bit later. And it's kind of like this special snuggle time with mommy or something like that. Number four, do find readers that your kids actually genuinely interested in reading. We have like all these Abeka readers, literally never even use them because my kids think they're kind of boring. But whenever I pull things out like Dr. Seuss or like Frog and Toad, then they're all about it. This is a real book to them. It means you are taking them seriously and they're excited to read the story. If it's too hard for them, you can alternate reading pages or even sentences with them. That's okay, but it's really important that they are interested in the book. Number five, this one really helped me out, you guys. Keep phonics lessons to a minimum while your child is reading a book. You really want them to have fun with reading. You want them to enjoy it and for it to be a source of entertainment in their life. So if they say a word wrong while they're reading, just correct them and move forward. Let them continue reading and continue the story because you don't wanna lose their interest and make it a drudgery. Maybe make a note of anything they were having an issue with, certain blends or phonics sounds, and you could work on that later. By the way, one thing that I've really loved with all of my kids is this book, Teach Your Child to Read in 100 Easy Lessons. If your child is having a really difficult time understanding how the sounds of phonics blend together to form a word, this can be a really helpful tool. It's very different than any curriculum I've seen out there and I enjoy it very much. Number six, do make sure that your child is challenged while reading, but not to the point of pure frustration. This really goes for all the subjects. We always wanna push our kids just a little bit past what they think they can do, but don't go too far because you do not want to burn them out. It is not worth it. So for example, I, like I said, will sometimes alternate reading pages of a book that's really a little too hard for them just so they can read it, especially if they really want to. And when it comes to family read aloud time, if they are like, are we done yet? I will ask, hey, can I read one more page or one more chapter? That was just a tip an older homeschool mom gave me once that's really been gold for us. All right, guys, those were my tips, and I am gonna link below the resources that I recommend all the time. Read Aloud Revival, definitely, definitely subscribe to their podcast, and I will also link below some twaddle-free recommendations for each grade from Ambleside.org. If you don't know what twaddle is, watch this video. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.